Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. I'm John Cook, and I'm joined today by George Goncalves, MUFG's Head of U.S. Macro Strategy. It's Tuesday, June 14th, 2022. Welcome back to the podcast, George. Good to be back as always. Yeah, and it's always good to have you on. Um, so, George, it's been a few weeks, uh, and as usual, 2022 keeps throw, throwing you know curveballs at us. Um, why don't we start the episode off with you know with kind of your general take on recent price action in both uh, you know fixed income and you know risky asset markets? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the year that never ends uh, at surprising us with what the twists and turns that we see uh, every single week, every single month. The um, yeah, I think you know there's been a game changer in the psychology of the markets post CPI. Um, I think what we've learned since you know last Friday's higher than expected inflation print is that you know secretly the markets were you know kind of hoping for this peak inflation narrative to really kind of set set it in and uh, really be the more dominant view going forward and. That really got pushed back, uh, given the uh, again even a new uh, higher high on the headline inflation, which is understandable given the energy shock that we're going through. And in by all uh, light looks of it, it most likely you know hasn't ended yet. So the headline inflation risk to further upside is is out there. And so I think the market is is, is you know um, and now you know you know really put the secretly again had a peak inflation hoping it was transitory in some elements of the inflation basket and i think that kind of all got uh, tabled for now and that led to a, a significant repricing of both fed expectations uh outright yield levels on the curve um you know really nowhere to run nowhere to hide spreads widening uh a sharp significant decline in Stock markets after breaking some key technical levels, uh, especially on the S and P 500. So you know, really, um, a, a market that's now coming to grasp with the idea that the Fed's going to have to be even more aggressive to really fight this inflation. Yeah, that that all makes makes a lot of sense, as you say. Nowhere to hide uh, risky assets or 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 fixed income. Um, you know, today as example, you could argue relatively mild price action, and you know the ten year notes off. You know, another you know another 10, 10 basis points or ten year notes cheaper by another ten basis points. Um, and and on you know on that note, we are recording this podcast on Tuesday, June fourteenth, um, which is one day before the FOMC renounces the results of the of, of the June meeting, George. You you recently published your FOMC preview report. Why don't you take our listeners through the high points of the piece and what we should expect from the Fed at this upcoming meeting? Absolutely. So the um, I think you know my base case, which is I'm, I'm assigning a large probability of the more likely outcome. Uh, I, I don't think the other outcomes are as plausible, but I'll, I'll discuss them as well. But the base case is that this this uh, meeting is going to come across as hawkish. Although you know, there's now uh, 75 basis points mostly baked in the cake for this hike at the June meeting, still delivering 75 after having just delivered 50. I think um, for those that haven't really gotten the memo, it's going to be a, um, a rude awakening. And then the, um, the idea of what they're going to do with their future forecasts for the dot plot, this is a June quarterly update. And uh, we're going to get updates for the both the macro forecast as well as their the Fed's projections on the interest rate uh, forecast, which is the dot plot. And I think that you know if they're truly you know, expeditiously silly trying to raise rates, they're going to have to close the gap between the 2022 forecasts as well from the, and the 2023. If you look at the 2023 and 2024 uh, you know terminal dots, they're kind of close or or above actually the um, the long run uh, dot of roughly 2.375 or 2.5, which is you know uh, in, in real Fed funds 50 basis points uh, based on the Fed's long run target of 2% inflation. Uh, you know if the Fed were to shift all median forecasts into the mid threes, getting closer to the market expectations, maybe not necessarily meeting it. I still think that's a hawkish development. And at the press conference, you know you you would expect this time. Unlike last time, where the Fed uh, or Fed Chair Powell took off the idea of 75 bips, I think at this point 
you know, he's going to you know, have his own draggy moment and do whatever it takes to combat inflation and not, uh, you know, say anything's off the table. Everything's on the table to fight inflation. So that's the base case. On the hawkish side, they could up the ante. I mean, it's kind of hard to get more hawkish than what I just described as base case. That seems pretty hawkish as it is. Um, they could be more aggressive with the rate forecast path is one. And in the Q&A, um, you know, there, you know, there's this uncomfortable you know, uh, view about the, the Fed's never going to be able to really shrink the balance sheet because now they're pushing up long-term rates and it's going to be hard for mortgages to prepay. If the idea of selling assets or some sort of facility that allows them to proactively sell treasuries and mortgages to kind of backfill the cap every month to get up to close to 95 billion, something like that would really get the markets uh, um, roiled. So I think that's the two hawkish, uh, base cases hawkish, hawkish uh, scenario is even more hawkish. The dovish scenario, which I assign on low probability is like, what if we're wrong and they cannot form consensus on doing 75 bips and instead do 50, which is still a big hike, but not what market's expecting. And any sort of mention around they're nervous about market dynamics and liquidity and just how market function, given all the financial conditions tightening, any sort of like language around that would be dovish. By a sign of very low probability, it's too early, it's too early for them to get dovish. This will be the third hike. They have to kind of keep uh, combating inflation. Yeah, and they, I mean, they obviously did some work to try and you know get out to the market, you know, yesterday that they were that they were likely, highly likely to do a seventy-five basis point hike. So that that would be that would be a lot of work for nothing. Um, so wow, there there's tons to tons to follow tomorrow. Um, between the uh, you know the statement itself, you know, do they in fact go seventy-five basis points? What did the summary of economic projections look at, as well as the, this this crazy hawkish scenario that you that you put out there, um, which although low probability seems very plausible. You know, they they sort of you know give us some sort of framework uh, for for you know for actively selling bonds. So plenty to plenty to unpack there. But I suspect what our listeners really want to know is how the market would react to those three scenarios. So why don't you take us through it? Yeah, really quickly. I mean, we've we've now unanchored the the long end of the curve twice. You know, between the 250, 325 range, there was really no support in between. We tried to make a run towards 270 on the 10 year that failed at the 50 day moving average, which keeps you know grinding higher as rates move up. So there's really no support for this market. Um, and so, but at the same time, we've discounted a lot of kind of bad news and hawkishness already. So I, th- I still think that even if they deliver a base case, which is hawkish, uh, that probably hurts risk assets more than it does 10-year treasuries because they've done a lot of discounting. And on the curve, I still think overall the posture of a flattener makes sense because they're going to be adjusting the short rate policy for a number of more hikes. So I, th- I think there's a, you know, a mild mild flattening with 10s maybe rallying, 30s rallying a little bit after this big sell-off uh, on the base case. On the hawkish scenario, it's, it's, the, it's the, almost the flip side because if they do have to proactively sell treasuries and mortgages, then you know, you know mortgage duration would hit um, you know, the belly of the curve. Uh, so I think that would be a steepener uh, on the hawkish scenario. On the dovish scenario, minor steep. I mean, oh, actually, a decent steepening because it's a 50 bit versus a 75. So we get a decent move in the two year, uh, but the whole rates market would rally, uh, and risk assets would do you know, phenomenally well. Um, but that just adds noise and volatility in what is likely still a bear market environment for overall financial assets. So the dovish scenario, I, I don't think it would be a time to, to reload on risk. I think it'd be more of an opportunity to shed uh, risk. And so if we were to see a rally in assets uh, because the Fed is dovish, I think that's a, a selling opportunity. Um, meanwhile, I think we're getting closer to averaging back into higher rates uh, where treasuries are, are competing with credit and mortgages. So I think uh, the hawkish and base case provide you a chance to kind of get back in uh, at higher rates. Got it. Yeah, that that sounds like there is um, there's a myriad of different ways the market could market could react to this. But just in summary, definitely noting that above a dovish uh, posture, you know, or, or rather a flattening posture, could kind of make sense. And uh, and dovishness uh, might be a might be a good opportunity to unload on some risk assets. Certainly resonates with me. Um, but for more, I would really encourage our listeners to check out George's June FOMC preview. And if you aren't receiving George's strategy reports, please feel free to get in contact 
contact with George directly. George, great stuff as always. Uh, and we will see what the Fed gives us uh, tomorrow or today if you're listening to the podcast. That's right. Thanks, John. And thank you for listening to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And reach out to your MUFG sales rep for any further information. Check back soon for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.